Madam President, dear colleagues, today it is my great honor to present my second report on foreign interference in all democratic processes in the European Union, including disinformation. I often hear that democracy around the world is in retreat. I would say that it is an incorrect statement. Democracy is not simply in retreat. Democracy is under attack. In today's intervention, I would like to especially focus on two overreaching aims of the report. The uh, first link of our work in the ING2 committee with following up uh, the implementation of the recommendations of the first report, which was approved last year. Second, we must examine the issues under the mandate of our committee vis-à-vis -vis Russia's ongoing brutal war against Ukraine and to build on the lessons learned. Our assessment shows that we have significantly increased our situational awareness and several necessary steps have, have been launched and progress has been attained. Uh, examples, Digital Service Act, Democracy Defense Package is on the way, uh, growing expertise acquired. However, in the view of up upcoming EU elections in 2024, we still should urge for stronger measures and more coordination to protect our European democracy. Uh, allow me to allow, outline some of the priorities from our report, which would make significant difference in making our union more resilient. Uh, first of all, we need to move beyond a reactive approach centered on fact-checking, debunking, etc., and instead focus on resilience building and vaccination of our societies against disinformation. Therefore, we need to establish a dedicated EU program to invest in our democracy in a sustainable way. It will not give a solution tomorrow, and it will be expensive, but it is certainly a worthwhile long-term investment. Another important conclusion of our report is that in tackling disinformation, EU is still suffering from a fragmented approach without clear coordination mechanism and goals. We simply cannot afford splintering our resources when our democracy is at stake. Third, we should also greatly raise the costs for perpetrators. Therefore, I reiterate that the toolbox of the EU can countermeasures should include a specific sanctions regime on foreign information manipulation and interference. Russia's imperial war of aggression against Ukraine has clearly exposed the interconnection between hostile information warfare, weaponization of energy, attacks on critical infrastructure, and threats to the EU, to our immediate neighborhood, as well as to the global security and stability. Europe now understands that the Cold War logic of buffer states is over. over. Today, gray zones in European security only create instability, risk, and opportunities for hostile interference. The EU must invest in closing these gray zones and supporting the resilience and integration of Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia in our European family and NATO. To strengthen our resilience, we must learn both from our partners like Ukraine in building resilience and tackling disinformation, but also from our own misjudgment, allowing to fall in the trap of energy dependency and elite capture in the past. When I recall the state of affairs, even three years ago, I'm glad to say today, Europe is far less naive about Russia, China, and other adversaries. A few words about structural priorities and new challenges we are facing. For years, we have been following a country agnostic approach that, threats, that treats all foreign influence efforts in the same way, regardless of, our, of their source country and thus the aim, scale, and the impact. We should not be afraid to call out those seeking intentionally and in a coordinated way to manipulate our democracy. Therefore, we, we are suggesting moving towards a risk-based approach based on objective criteria. Similar approach already has been used in the EU legislation on money laundering or terrorist financing. Immense challenge 
presents rapid development of artificial intelligence tools. If so far we still are able to identify what is fake, artificial intelligence will make creating this information at scale much easier and cheaper and much more difficult to recognize. We are waiting uh, Artificial Intelligence Act with great expectations. Another challenge is the speed of decision-making process. We must face the fact that today's legislation concerning consequences of digital revolution already addresses the problems of yesterday. This is not only the EU challenge. It is a global problem to be addressed together with like-minded partners. Moreover, I am convinced that this House, in the next legislation, will need a dedicated cross-sectoral committee dealing with foreign interference and information manipulation issues, including new technological challenges. In conclusion, I would like to thank my shadow rapporteurs for excellent cooperation through this entire process, also the Secretariat and our political advisors. Working on challenges of the INGE 1 and INGE 2 committees has certainly been one of the most important missions throughout the, my, my time as a member of European Parliament. I truly hope that all of you can support the report. Thank you for your attention. Grazie a lei, onorevole Calniete. E ora la facoltà di intervenire, l'onorevole Glucksmann, prego. Madame la vice-présidente, chers collègues, il est des moments dans l'histoire où l'indolence devient coupable et la légèreté criminelle. Nous vivons l'un de ces moments et après bientôt trois ans de travail à la tête de la commission spéciale sur les ingérences étrangères, je veux aujourd'hui partager avec vous les conclusions vertigineuses auxquelles nous sommes parvenus. Pendant 20 ans, les dirigeants européens ont fait preuve de naïveté et de complaisance. Pendant 20 ans, ils ont laissé des tyrans s'essuyer les pieds sur notre souveraineté et nos démocraties européennes être la cible d'attaques extérieures coordonnées et sophistiquées. Pendant 20 ans, ils ont ouvert grand les portes de nos cités à leurs ennemis. Chers collègues, financement de partis politiques anti-Union européenne, cyberattaques, campagne de désinformation, corruption des élites, la guerre hybride que des régimes hostiles ont lancée contre nos démocraties et que nos dirigeants ont si longtemps refusé de voir, prend différentes formes, elle arbore différents visages. Elle prend parfois dans nos téléphones, sur nos réseaux sociaux, le visage d'un troll ou d'un bot élevé dans les fermes d'Evgeny Prigogine à Saint-Pétersbourg. Le constat de notre commission est implacable. Les campagnes de manipulation de l'information sont une arme de destruction démocratique massive. Des acteurs privés, mus par l'appât du gain, comme la société israélienne Tim Yorge, et des dictatures, mues par la haine viscérale de nos démocraties, comme la Chine ou la Russie, visent à affecter le choix des électeurs, amplifier les polémiques, diviser, exploiter les vulnérabilités de nos sociétés ouvertes et encourager les discours de haine dans nos pays. Tout ce qui polarise notre débat entretient une atmosphère de confusion et de guerre civile sur nos réseaux. Tout ce qui sape la confiance envers nos institutions répond à leur stratégie. Le chaos informationnel dans lequel nous évoluons désormais est une aubaine pour les tyrans et un poison mortel pour les démocrates, comme l'est la corruption. Chers collègues, la corruption des élites précipite toujours la chute des cités. Et nous avons consenti à ce que le poison de la corruption se distille au sommet de nos États. Comment avons-nous pu accepter pendant si longtemps que tant de chefs de gouvernement, de ministres, de hauts fonctionnaires à y travailler pour les intérêts russes ou chinois. Comment la démocratie allemande, par exemple, a-t-elle pu tolérer que Gerhard Schröder parte travailler ainsi pour Gazprom, quelques semaines seulement après la fin d'une chancellerie marquée par des choix stratégiques, dont son futur employeur serait le principal bénéficiaire Comment les démocraties françaises, mais aussi autrichiennes, belges et de tant d'autres pays européens qui se targuent d'avoir un système démocratique, ont-ils pu accepter que des ministres aillent travailler ainsi pour Gazprom ou pour d'autres entreprises qui font partie du système Poutine Et comment accepte-t-elle aujourd'hui que tant de ministres aillent travailler pour les intérêts chinois 
Nos classes dirigeantes ne doivent plus être les supermarchés dans lesquels les régimes autocratiques viennent tranquillement faire leur course. Il ne s'agit pas ici de morale, mais de sauvegarde de nos intérêts vitaux. Chers collègues, la trahison de nos nations et de nos démocraties prend aussi le visage de démagogues, d'extrême droite prêts à se vendre à l'ennemi. Et des financements se transforment en asservissement quand il s'agit pour des partis politiques européens de répondre à une stratégie imposée de l'extérieur. C'est le cas notamment de Marine Le Pen qui, encore il y a peu, à l'Assemblée nationale, a épousé la vision stratégique d'un régime auquel son parti doit aujourd'hui encore des millions d'euros. Chers collègues, les élections se tiendront en 2024 dans un contexte de guerre en Europe et nous devons défendre leur intégrité. Nous comptons sur la Commission pour organiser dès maintenant cette défense. Je m'adresse donc à vous, Madame la Vice-Présidente. Que prévoyez-vous concrètement pour lutter efficacement contre la manipulation de l'information pendant la campagne Comment la Commission s'assurera-t-elle que les nouvelles initiatives, telles que le paquet de défense de la démocratie, seront opérantes dans les prochains mois et permettront d'assurer l'intégrité de la campagne électorale Comment la Commission s'assurera-t-elle que les acteurs du numérique, et notamment les très grandes plateformes, obéissent enfin à nos exigences et à nos règles Comment la Commission garantira-t-elle un niveau élevé de cybersécurité pour toutes les institutions concernées par les élections Comment la Commission envisagera-t-elle de se coordonner avec les gouvernements des États membres pour garantir que ces élections sont protégées ces élections feront suite à notre mandat, ébranlé par les ingérences extérieures, qu'elles soient liées à la pandémie de Covid-19 ou au retour brutal de la guerre sur notre continent, ou même au Qatargate. L'enjeu est crucial. Nous devons montrer que démocratie ne rime plus avec faiblesse et que Europe ne rime plus avec impuissance. C'est tout le sens du travail que nous avons mené ensemble, de manière transpartisane, avec la Commission spéciale sur les ingérences étrangères depuis son instauration en septembre 2020. Nous comptons sur vous, nous comptons sur la Commission, nous comptons sur les États membres, mais nous comptons aussi sur nous-mêmes pour protéger nos démocraties. C'est mi la mission la plus sacrée d'un parlementaire, protéger cette maison qui nous permet d'exprimer nos différences, la protéger contre des régimes qui suppriment chez eux les libertés et qui entendent les malmener chez nous. Chers collègues, nous sommes forts et nous serons puissants si nous décidons de l'être. Le moment est venu de décider de l'être. Grazie, grazie onorevole Glucksmann. Facoltà ora di intervenire a nome della Commissione la vicepresidente Jourova. Prego. Madam President, honorable members, uh, Madam Rapporteur, the topic of foreign interference is both timely and important. I would like to thank the European Parliament and the Committee on Foreign Interference in all democratic processes in the European Union, including disinformation, for its hard and relevant work. The work of the Inge Committee and this House has been a real source of inspiration for the Commission. I want to congratulate the Rapporteur, Madame Sandra Kalniete, for bringing forward this work, which seems to command broad support across this House. That is testament to the importance of the report in analyzing the phenomena of foreign interference and reflecting the need for a truly whole of society approach. The report explores many dimensions. It looks at interference via elite capture, national diasporas, universities and cultural events. It includes valuable and concrete recommendations on sanctions against foreign interference. In recent years, the Commission and the European External Action Service have stepped up their work to protect our democracies from foreign interference. This was a key strand of the European Democracy Action Plan. For example, the Commission is working intensely with platforms, and I am confident that the recently adopted Digital Services Act and the revised Code of Practice on Disinformation will help limit the foreign information manipulation and interference online. 
The Commission is very conscious of the danger of information manipulation and interference in the electoral processes. This is why my proposal on the transparency and targeting of political advertising will introduce common high standards of transparency for political advertising services for all media. It will also limit the frame the and frame the use of personal data in targeting and amplifying political ads. The European External Action Service, in close cooperation with the Commission, has continued its work on foreign information manipulation and interference. The progress made on a common analytical framework and methodology uh, in conjunction with the work on the Information Sharing and Analysis Centre will significantly increase our situational awareness and understanding of suspicious and malicious activities and cooperation in a whole-of-society approach. In conclusion, the European Democracy Action Plan allowed us to undertake unprecedented legal and other actions on strengthened resilience of elections to promote independence of the media and address disinformation. But you are right, this is not enough. Our citizens are asking us to do more. We heard this also in the Conference on the Future of Europe. As announced by President von der Leyen, the Commission is working on the Defence of Democracy package with special focus on covered foreign interference through interest representation services. The package will include a communication, a directive on transparency of interest representation, a recommendation on elections in the EU, and a recommendation of promoting the engagement and effective participation of citizens and civil society organizations in public policy-making processes. Because while we must protect ourselves from outside interference, we must also build democratic resilience from within by supporting member states in engaging with citizens and civil society and their policy-making processes. The idea is for the EU to be equipped with a new generation of transparency tools <clears throat> to shed light on foreign influence while staying committed to freedom of expression and association. In particular, the proposed directive on transparency of interest representation on behalf of third countries would aim to ensure that companies, organizations or persons carrying out activities for third country governments that seek to influence public decision making in the EU do so in a transparent manner. This law will help us to understand better the financial flows to the EU from third countries that may want to undermine or destabilize our political processes. And it will help citizens to understand who is behind what they read or listen to and uh, in also what is behind uh, the policy-making environment. It would not ban or criminalize any such activities. The EU remains open and democratic, but we cannot be naive and actors that receive this type of funding, irrespective of what they are, should be transparent about it. Let me also reassure you that the proposal will be very different from national foreign agents laws proposed elsewhere, uh, such as the withdrawn NGO law in Georgia or the Russian foreign agent legislation. The approach is very different in terms of aim, scope, supervision and sanctions. Together with the President, we decided to take more time to consult broadly and gather more information in order to address also the concerns we heard in this House. We will reinforce the analysis underlying the proposal and upgrade it into a full impact assessment. This is important legislation and I want to make sure it will be balanced, meaningful and effective. Now turning back to the next elections to your Parliament, we would like to explain how we will continue our close cooperation with Member States. In its communication activities ahead of the European elections, the Commission will inform citizens about the EU and its policy actions so that they can make informed decisions and engage in the European democratic debate.
We will also support member, co member states' cooperation on election-related matters in the framework of the European Cooperation Network on Elections and the uh, European External Action Service managed rapid alert system on disinformation. Honourable members, since the start of last year, the Commission has been working with member states on a joint mechanism on election resilience to support the exchange of expertise in areas such as disinformation and cyber security. In October, we will organize a high-level event on elections with member states. Our objective is to exchange best practices on how to promote the exercise of electoral rights in 2024 elections to the European Parliament. Thank you for, atten for your attention, and I'm sorry for being so long, but I had too much to say. Thank you very much.